is this too many? Welcome back to the DX Engineering Channel. I'm Michael, KI8R. There are well over a dozen HTs currently on the DX Engineering website. And if you throw in the cheap budget branded radios, that adds dozens more. Choosing a handheld radio today can be confusing with all the features, modes, and prices. My goal here today is not to compare each handheld radio that's currently available, but to create a foundation for you to decide what rig is the best choice for you. So to do this, I've broken the process down into various topics to help you make your decision. So let's start with how much you're willing or able to spend on your new rig. This will certainly steer your decision on what you buy. You don't have to spend top dollar. For some, an inexpensive radio is all they need. For others, a few more features are desirable. Still, others want to go all in and buy the best that money can buy. Where you fall in this arena will influence your decision. HTs are low power radios, typically around five watts on high power. On the surface, this may seem like enough, but is it? If you live in a city or a suburb, chances are that you are close enough to at least some of the local repeaters in your area for an HT to give you a good signal. However, if you live further out, using a handheld may leave you feeling frustrated. Besides lower power output, displays tend to be small and can be hard to read, especially in a mobile environment. Also, navigating an HT while driving can be challenging and dangerous. And then there's the internal speaker, which for the most part can be difficult to hear in all but the quietest cars. If most of your radio time is spent in a car, a mobile rig may be a better choice. Still, many hams use an HT in their car successfully. Adding an external antenna and a speaker mic can turn your little radio into a competent mobile rig. And if you still need more power, adding an amplifier can turn your low power HT into a respectable mobile powerhouse. If your home has aluminum siding, you may find that your house acts like a Faraday cage. RF doesn't get in and it doesn't escape. And while this is a bit of an exaggeration, the point is, is that your house may degrade your ability to hear and be heard. So adding a larger antenna like this one or an external antenna in your attic or outside of your home may be just what you need to make yourself heard. This is where an HT shines. HTs were made to be put on your belt and carried around. This is one of the most flexible radios you can use, and it gets you on the air almost immediately. The beauty of an HT is that it goes where you go, and you can use an HT for parks on the air or summits on the air. They're also a great companion when you travel. Most handheld radios today are dual band, two meters and 70 centimeters, along with a few choices for single and tri-band models. The number of repeaters in your area and the bands that they cover will likely influence your buying decision. Also, if you travel a lot, you may find that a tri-band HT will give you more flexibility. A great way to decide if a rig is for you is to watch or read reviews. YouTube has plenty of ham radio channels that have review videos. There's also eham.net, which has reviews for almost anything imaginable in ham radio. And if a friend or a club member has a rig you're considering, get their input on why they chose that radio. Ask them what they like and dislike about it. The DX Engineering website also offers an easy way to compare most products. To do this for HTs, select the sidebar menu, followed by transceivers and receivers, and then handheld transceivers. Next, select each rig you want to compare by selecting the compare checkbox. Once you've made all your selections, click View Compare. Finally, you can scroll through this page to see the various features of each radio you've chosen. FM repeaters have been around since the early 70s. 
Digital modes came along in the early 2000s with DSTAR followed by DMR and later Yaesu System Fusion. There are other digital modes as well, such as P25, NXDN, and M17, but these are the most popular. FM repeaters generally operate in a standalone configuration, but some can be linked to other repeaters via an RF link or over the internet. Digital repeaters can also be used just like FM repeaters, however, most are linked via the internet to what are basically conference bridges. Depending on the mode, these may be referred to as rooms, reflectors, or talk groups. You can also access these modes by using a device called a hotspot, which is typically a Raspberry Pi with an attached RF modem that runs software and allows you to connect to the conference bridges. These modes will not talk to each other natively. However, some enterprising hams have built software bridges on some of the conferences that allow the different modes to talk to each other. So, should you choose FM or digital? Well, the answer is not that simple. Each mode has a learning curve, with Fusion being the easiest, followed by DSTAR and then DMR. Digital modes offer the advantage of being hooked over the internet, allowing you to talk to people all over the world. You can also do this with some FM repeaters by using IRLP or Allstar. If you decide that you want to use one of the digital modes, you may want to find out what digital repeaters are available in your area, or just use a hotspot. HTs have come a long way over the years. Many of the current offerings will have features such as GPS, APRS, Bluetooth, hundreds or even thousands of memories, waterproof ratings, scanning, wideband receivers, programming software, USB connectors, weather channel and aircraft receive, and touchscreens, among others. The features you'll get will depend on the price of the radio and the model you choose. Depending on the radio, there are likely a number of accessories to choose from, such as extra batteries, speaker microphones, headsets, DC adapters, cases, and programming cables, among others. Accessories are a great way to make your HT more versatile. There are several great ways to find repeaters in your area. The ARRL publishes their repeater directory annually. There's also repeaterbook.com, which is an invaluable resource not only for finding local repeaters, but also repeaters all over the US, Canada, and Mexico. It also has some listings for repeaters around the world. Our Finder is another good resource. Our Finder has a subscription model and apps for iOS and Android. Some of the manufacturers offer free software that you can download to program your radio. RT Systems also offers software for most radios as well and includes the programming cable. There's also Chirp Next, which is an open source tool that will program most radios. Still not sure what rig to buy? One way to help you decide is to talk to your friends or other hams in your area about what kind of radio they use. What is it about their rig that made them choose it? Would they purchase it again? What rig would they recommend for you? My advice, buy as much radio as you can afford. Get a radio that will be enough radio for you today and something that you can grow into as time goes on. An HT is the most versatile way to get on the air, whether you carry it with you, use it as a mobile or a base station, or on a POTA or SOTA expedition you will find that there really isn't another radio that can do as much as an HT. No matter what radio you choose, get on the air and have fun. Hey, thanks for watching today. I'm Michael, K-I-8-R, and we'll catch you on the next one.